All right, this video goes over an important question that a lot of kids often get wrong on the AP test, so I just want to quickly talk about it real quick. Now, this deals with regression, so let me quickly go over the equation of our regression line. Y hat equals A plus BX. Now, this equation is meant to take an X value and predict a Y value. It does not work the other way around. We cannot take an actual y value and work backwards to predict the x value. Algebraically, it might make sense to subtract the a and divide by b, but statistically, it doesn't. So what happens if we really wanted it to work backwards? We really want to did switch our two variables. So this is the explanatory variable, and y is the response variable. If we wanted to flip-flop those two variables, it's going to actually take a lot of work. We have to come down to our formula for slope, and our standard deviations would get flipped, because they are going to flip the variables, right? We're going to come over to our y-intercept, and our x-average and our y-average would also get flipped. And not only would I flip those, but since I flipped to my standard deviations, my B value is going to be different, which means my B value right here is going to be different than it was. So if you want to flip-flop who is the explanatory and who is the response, you certainly can, but be aware that it's a little bit of work. Let me give you an example. Researchers conducted a study and found a positive relationship between how much money a married couple makes combined and the price of their home. Big surprise. If you make more money, you're probably going to have a bigger, more expensive home. The correlation coefficient R was 0.85. The least squares regression line predicting home price based on the combined income is y, equal, y hat equals 7,996.53 plus 1.62x. So first off, let's make sure we understand we're trying to predict home price. So y hat is home price in dollars, and the x variable here is the income of the married couple. So my question is, what is the slope of the line that would be used to predict combined income based on home price? So what if I wanted to switch who's the X and who's the Y, who's the explanatory, who's the response, what would my slope be? So let's first make sure we understand this slope. This slope is 1.62. I'm going to put it over 1. The 1 is income in terms of dollars, and the 1.62 is the home price. So this tells me that for every one dollar that a um, married couple makes more each year, then their home price will go up by $1.62. So I want to totally reverse who's the X and who's the Y. To do this, it takes quite a bit of effort. Let me explain. First off, let's go back to our formula for slope. Slope is R times the standard deviation of Y divided by the standard deviation of X. Now, let's talk about what we know. We know currently the slope is 1.62, and we know currently that R is 0.85. Again, all this was told to us. Now, we have no idea what this relationship is. We don't know what the standard deviation of y is. We don't know what the standard deviation of x is. But we do know what s y divided by s of x would be. So if I divide both sides by 0.85, if I divide both sides by 0.85, cross those out, I get that this relationship between the standard deviation of y and the standard deviation of x is going to be, I'm going to bring up the calculator here, 1.62 divided by 0.85. I get 1.9059. 1 1.9059. 1 1.9059. Now, here's the deal. If I want to switch who's the explanatory and who's the response, I want to try to predict income with a given home price. I want to literally switch these two variables. Now, even though I don't know what each one of those are, I could switch them around. How? Well, just go ahead and do it. Switch it around. Put the S of X on top. Put the S of Y on the bottom. What's that going to do for this number? Well, all it's going to do is reciprocate that number. It's just going to do 1 divided by 1.9059. It's literally just going to take that number and switch it. So if you want to switch, flip-flop the standard deviations, I have to take that value, 1.9059, and flip-flop it. So 1 divided by 1.9059. 1 divided by, sorry, I mistyped that, 1.9059, and I get 0 0.5247, 0 0.5247. 
0.5247. Okay, now let's try to go and find our new slope, right? Well, our new slope is going to be r times the standard deviation of x divided by the standard deviation of y. Why is this our new slope? Because we're switching the x and y, right? So I want to have this value, which I just found is 0.5247. Again, even though I don't know the individual standard deviations, I do know that if I flip who is x and who is y, I would get the ratio 0.5247. And I'm going to times that by r. We still know r. r, remember, does not change if you switch x and y. So who you call x, who you call y does not impact r. So r is still 0.85. So to find my new slope, I just had to take 0.85 and times it by 0.5247. So 0.85 times 0.5247, and I get my new slope of 0.4460. If you round that correctly, the 9 would tell the 59 to go to a 6. So 0 0.4460, 0 0.4460. So here is my new slope, this new slope, 0.4460. I could put it over 1. The 1 now is, and again, this is going to be a little bit tricky. I know it's normally x. Remember, we switched them. So I'm not going to use x and y. I'm just going to use words. So the 1 would represent the home price and home price in dollars. And the 0 0.460 would represent income in dollars. So now, flipping the variables around, I get for every $1 that my house is worth, my income goes up by about 45 cents, or my combined income with my wife. So that is how you do it. It's a little bit complicated, but it's this idea that if you want to change the slope, you have to change that relationship of the standard deviations. You need to flip that relationship. So to flip that relationship, take the current slope, and the first thing you must do is divide out the R. And then you could literally just flip that ratio around by just doing 1 divided by the point 1.9059. And then with that new ratio, switching the x's and y's, plug it back into your slope formula, timesing it again by r, which is still the same because r does not change based on who's x and who's y, and you'll get your new slope. So hopefully that made sense, and um, guarantee something like that will show up on your test.